I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Graham Goble of the Little River Band talks about the group's biggest hit. It was the biggest North American hit. It's also the biggest streaming song from the band. 97 million streams on Spotify alone. He breaks down reminiscing. Graham Goble on Rock History Music. With When I first heard reminiscing, and it's a thing, you maybe there's a name for it. I'm not a songwriter. But there is like the phrasing, if you would have given me those first three, four lines of that song, yeah. I never would have come up with the phrasing and the bounce of that song because I love when songwriters come up when it's complicated. There's lots of, I'm doing this, I'm going this. Like, you know, Elton John's early songs were like that. Then by the 80s, he was doing Little Genie. Of course, he got his genius back. It wasn't the same. But uh, but I, I there's just songs, it's like they go da na 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 and they're like, they're like, uh, they're like, uh, uh, anthems now, you know, a lot of young people are doing those things, but that's not, it's not like complicating phrasing, which is really intricate and it brings you in and it tells a story, which yeah. you were, and still you're really, really good at that. Well, yes. Uh, thank you for that. And um, I don't like to be boring in songwriting. And, and I, 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 when we were talking about songwriters before, I've got to add Roy Orbison into that list because Roy Orbison didn't follow any rules whatsoever, and I don't follow any rules. So when you think about uh, reminiscing, so so I hear just on the one note, Friday night it was late, I was walking you home, we got down to the gate, and I was chord change, dreaming of the night, okay? Now, think of night and day, like the beat, beat, beat of the tom-tom, where the da-da-da-da-da, like the tick-tick-tock of the thing, all the one note. Yeah. That was not intentionally copied, but it's absolutely a reference because I can't think of any other song other than Reminiscing and Night and Day that have that almost like the one-note samba song. It's just one note, but then it's that opening line just sets the whole image for the song. And when I wrote it, because I wasn't thinking about it, I thought, well, hang on a minute, this is not in four. Like, we've got one, two, three, four, like, Friday night, it was late. Well, so so it's crossing the beat all the time, but it stays in four. That that was the wonderful thing about it, because when you uh, normally, if you're counting well, one, two, three, four, Friday night, it was late, you would stay on the one. But I don't do that. I, I just It crosses all the time. So I just keep the beat going, the the bars, but then then I've got my lyric, and and that's the way it came through, John. That's the way I could hear it. To me, it's you one see, of the no, most I, interesting songs I, I, the band ever recorded. I written anything like that before? Yeah. So so that's what I'm saying. I didn't have the musical sophistication, to, to, to like a Hans Zimmer or or someone that can sit down and or a Mozart can sit down and write this. What I can do is that I can. This comes from within me, and I'm a, I'm as amazed as you might be now that you hear it. I was as, as amazed in 1977 when that came out. I thought, "What in the hell is that?" <laughs> there is no reference for it. I was just amazed, and I'm still amazed because I can listen to reminiscing today. I don't hardly ever listen to it, but. I think, God, that's an incredible, not only is it an incredible song, but then I was blessed with an amazing band to play it, an amazing singer like Glenn Shorrock to deliver the vocal. Um, But all of the parts in, uh, like Rick Formosa's strings, uh, Peter Jones's um, uh, Rhodes playing, B. Birdle's uh, riff part in the third verse, the amazing flugelhorn from Bobby Venier at the end. That was a one take. He just walked in, did a warm up, and said, "Okay, now play it again, and I'll have a go." And we said, "No, Bobby, you, we've already got it. What you played on that warm up, that's going to be it." And he said, oh, "I don't know. I can do a lot better than that." We gave him three more goes, and he didn't do any better than that. And the the warm up thing is what's on the record. But it it was sort of like it was guided from. Like from everywhere, everyone played. George McArdle took weeks to come up with the amazing bass, but that's essentially one note to the bar because 
he started in a complicated way and doing doing more of a syncopated bass. But then it just happened that he said, no, I'll play one note to the bar and allow the conga to take the groove. Like, that's coming from the conga. But when you haven't got a conga, the bass player tends to fill it up because it's there. But everyone played with so much space, it left room for Glenn's vocal, it left room for the strings, it left room for the atmosphere of the song. So we had five, six musicians there, seven musicians with, um, I think six or seven, um, that, that respected the space that the song was asking for. And so it, it, I think the great records are made uh, by people knowing what not to play, mm -hmm. you see. So if you, when when you see um, all the covers and all the, all, and, and, and might I say the, the American band trying to play Reminiscing, they don't get it. They don't get the space that, that, that you could stand on stage and sing that song with no backing and it would still be great. But people want to fill it up and fill it up because they don't just play the one note and just let it sit, just let the groove take it. But luckily for me, um, I had a wonderful band that got that and we we nailed it really. And it's a timeless, not only song, but but more importantly, it's a timeless recording. It's one of the great, it's, it's, like it's perfect. I wouldn't change a note in the whole the whole thing. And interestingly, on the ultimate hits, when I was going through all these tapes, I discovered um, a solo violin intro. Have you heard that? That's on the ultimate hits? Yes. Yes. That's really that, nice. And I included it on this version. And, and the reason it wasn't included, and I think it was a good call, was because it was sort of like an introduction to an introduction. So as a single, it was better to, back in the day to establish a song. But that was actually recorded uh, with the intention of, of trying to place it in the 40s, like with that sort of um, um, so, solo violin. Um, uh, we didn't use it on back in the day in 78 on Sleeper Catcher, but now that lost intro is on Ultimate Hits. There's two brand new compilations. You saw them as he was talking during the interview clips. Available from the Little River Band, all remastered, including some rarities. There'll be links in the description where you can pick them up and links to Graham Goble's official site as well. Join our Patreon, get early access to all the videos in this series and every other series as well. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos on social media. We'd appreciate that. I'm John Bowden, more from Graham Goble in the next few days. This is Rock History Music.